In the meantime, <laughs> and perhaps the most surprising result of last weekend in college football, number two Iowa fell to unranked Purdue. So now Cincinnati occupies that spot in the AP poll, followed by Oklahoma at three and Alabama at four. As far as our all-state playoff predictor, Georgia idle this week. They have a 90% chance to make the playoff. Oklahoma next at 62%. They'll play Kansas Saturday noon Eastern on ESPN. And so let me bring Heather and Paul into the conversation. Good morning to you both, as always. Uh, Heather, how did that loss by Iowa in the big picture impact the playoff race right now? Well, two things, Greeny. The first is that it put a severe dent in the Big Ten's chances of getting two teams in because the most realistic scenario for that would have been to have Iowa go undefeated and lose a close game in the Big Ten championship. But the second thing that it does, and we saw this in the AP poll, is it opens the door for Cincinnati. The Bearcats do not need a miracle. But I will tell you this repeatedly until the SEC championship game. Cincinnati needs to hope that there are not two SEC teams in this thing but so does Oklahoma so does the Pac-12 champ because what will happen is you will have Georgia Alabama the Big Ten champion and then a big debate for that fourth spot okay so uh, that opens the door as you mentioned there for Cincinnati it also opens the door Paul for your favorite coach Jim Harbaugh in Michigan they're playing Northwestern this weekend they're sitting in a very good spot is this the year that that Big Ten champion and that representative in the playoff is, is Michigan. This is definitely the year, Greeny, that Jim Harbaugh will beat Northwestern, but that's as far as I'm going to go. Uh, I, I think he has done a really good job. Give him credit. He's, he was on the hottest seat in the country, and he's still alive very well because he's undefeated. he got Michigan State next week. He's got Penn State and, and, of course, Ohio State at the end of the year. And right now, I've seen too much football from the Big Ten to believe that Michigan can beat Ohio State. Uh, they're, they're going to have a good season. He'll save his job, whether that pleases Michigan or not. But I still don't believe Michigan is going to beat Ohio State at the end of the year. All right, we will see about all of that, and all these things are still to be played out. There are a few other stories around college football that I'm fascinated by. One of them is the coaching job at LSU, which opens now as Ed Orgeron is going to be out at the end of the season. On the radio, we were talking about it. That might be a more attractive job than a lot of NFL jobs, depending upon the circumstances. Heather, who's going to get it? I like Mel Tucker at Michigan State, and normally I would say it's kind of taboo to hop around to three schools in about four years. He went from Colorado <laughs> to Michigan State, but I don't think anybody would fault him, and nor should they, for jumping on this opportunity if it's presented. Look, undefeated, top ten ranking. He's one of the hottest names in the industry right now, and he's got experience in the SEC. I mean, Alabama, Georgia, he's coached under Nick Saban. I think he's got all the pieces of the puzzle, so he'd get my vote right now. Uh what do you think, uh, Paul? Obviously, you live in this every single day on your radio show and beyond. Uh, what, what are you hearing from people, and what is your expectation? I think they would have liked uh, to, to get a, a big name, uh, a Dabo Sweeney, who, who's not going there, or Jimbo Fisher, who previously was hired by the AD now at LSU. But, but I don't think that's going to happen. So I, I think Mel Tucker is a really interesting choice. And the, the president at, at LSU is fairly new, uh, is, is reportedly in favor of that. Think about this for a second, though. The last time LSU hired a coach from Michigan State, it was Nick Saban. He did pretty mm -hmm. well down there. Yeah, that, that all worked out pretty well for them. I, I got 30 seconds for one more quickly. The Heisman race is as wide open as it has felt in a really long time. Heather, in your view, who's the favorite? I have Bryce Young at the top of my list right now. 24 touchdowns, leading the SEC, third in the FBS. Plus, you look at what he's done against the Blitz over the last seven games, completed 67% of his passes, 11 touchdowns, one interception. He's got my vote right now. Paul, who you got? Jordan Davis. Uh, who is he? He's the, uh, he's, the, he's, the, he's, the, he's the head of the, of the best defensive line I've ever seen at, at the University of Georgia. Will he mm. win it? Probably not. Is, is he the best? He's the best player. He represents that defensive line, and I think he deserves a lot of consideration, Greeny, because uh, it's long overdue. Uh, we don't see defensive players win the Heisman often, or I believe just once, but it's not impossible, so we'll see what happens. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.